Hey, it's Arrow. This is Defrag. Asking the questions. Questioning the answers. We do Defrag while I'm out on what I call a transition walk. A transition walk is we go through transitions in our day-by-day you know, services to the world. And we don't take the time to listen to the transitions that we're going through. We'll say, oh man, I'm just not in the mood, or I'm not feeling it, or we come up with so many excuses as to why things do or don't happen, but we don't understand the transition, the process that is required to create progress. So you ask questions, but do you ever find answers? This is Defrag. Today, the the subject is pretty interesting because I've always believed that each and every one of us are born creative people. We just choose not to be creative because of judgment, uh, self-fear, because we feel like that if we did set it free, that it won't be liked. So therefore, we're judging ourselves. The subject I want to cover today is 100% based on one thing, the ins and outs, ups and downs of being a creative. A creative means you. It means me. It means my own dog who is constantly creating ways to break out of her kennel. I mean, she went through two metal kennels like boom, boom in one year. So being a creative is basically saying I accept the fact that no matter what my artist looks like, I fit into their shoes. Now, as an artist, as a creative, what can I do that's going to help me grow with this skill, with this gift? the ins and outs, the ups and downs of being a creative. I'm blessed with the opportunity to have great conversations with some of the best chefs in the city that I live in because they shop at our store. And I ask them, do you ever sit there in the kitchen and come up with your own food design? Because you know deep inside that whatever it is that you're making, there's always that opportunity that you can make it better. Do you ever get the opportunity to play with the food? And the majority of them, this is the ins and the outs and the ups and downs of being a creative. The majority of them say, they won't let me do that. I have to make what they say that we are sharing on that menu. And I look at them and you can, you can see the steam and the love and the passion just kind of fall from their heart and eyes because they want to take chances. They, they want to seek new opportunities. But because we live in such a corporate world and so many of these restaurants are really hardcore driven, it's like trying to reinvent the McRib. And if you tried something new, they would probably, you know, hey, there's the door. But the ins and outs and the ups and downs of being a creative, where do you practice? Where do you give yourself permission to explore? I'm not going to lie to you. I I will tell you until the day my final breath is shared that I waited 36 years to finally get to do what I always wanted to do as a broadcaster. I didn't get to do it in corporate radio because it was their radio station. It was their format. They paid thousands, if not millions of dollars to make sure that their product was delivered the way that research showed that it should be handed out there. I was nothing more than a voice. I was the talent on the air doing what they wanted me to do. So when this thing called streaming and podcasting came into play in 2012, all of a sudden it was like the Berlin Wall fell down. It was the attempt to be a radio guy on something that is this right here, podcasting. It was a horrible mistake. And the reason why I say that is because I sucked. And there's a big chance that I still do suck, but just not as bad as I did back in 2012 because I wanted to be that radio guy. And here was this free outlet where I had no program directors, no, no general managers, no real discipline. And then one day, the ins and outs and the ups and downs of creativity spoke out. It said, you got to learn this language, dude. And this language is not about being a radio person, which is every reason why I talk with the chefs, because they are so formulated, so shaped, so into what their company wants them to do because it's a paycheck. But inside their creative process, what are they really thinking? Where is their stage, their platform, the ins and outs and the ups and downs of being a creative? What is it that they're doing and and how is it performed? And are they taking notes? 
I, I'm blessed with this opportunity to 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 talk with chefs who release the, a lot of information inside these cookbooks, but they don't call them cookbooks anymore. What they do is they call it a continuation of the family tradition. Now, I know a lot of families that would say, you aren't getting the family recipe. That's not the new thing. The new thing these days is to get that old recipe into the hands of a new generation. And that's what I love about these, these chefs with releasing these new books. All of this incredible food from different parts of the world being shared all over the world. That's part of the ins and outs and the ups and downs of being a creative. It's having the courage to step free from all of these things that are protected by corporations and family traditions. And it's saying, no, no, let's do something different so that more people are included. For so long, we have been been this generation that has been, it's all about me. It's all about my family. It's all about this. We don't let anybody on the inside. It's like Bruce Lee with martial arts. He always said, don't let anybody know what your knowledge is because then it'll become a weapon to those who are your enemy. I totally get that. But if we could have stepped into his experiences a little more as regular everyday martial artists, the greatest part of that journey would have been what he knew combined with another master's knowledge, combined with a grandmaster's knowledge, would have made tomorrow's martial artists even greater when it comes to being a black belt. Because so many people will take martial arts, they'll make it to a green belt, and for some reason, they don't feel like it's a part of their life. I want to know that moment when they looked at themselves in the mirror, the ins and the outs and the ups and downs of being a creative, because you got to create in martial arts. I want to know in that moment when they said no, how their eyes and heart changed. I know where I was in my daily writing. And it's not that I quit martial arts because I'm far from that. It's just that my body couldn't handle the kicks, the punches, the, the takedowns on a, on a gymnasium floor. I needed to be present with my mind, body, and soul. And the mind and body were not talking to each other. So let's take that experience to a construction worker, somebody who designs buildings or houses. And, you know, because they put so much hard work, dedication and loyalty and their body into putting up the walls and the ceilings that one day they look at each other and they go, I can't do it anymore. They either become business managers or they they basically walk away from it. I know a gentleman that just had two knee replacements because he's been an HVAC worker for all these years. And he says, I've been under more houses. I've had to lift all of this heavy equipment. He says, I had to make a choice. It was either the pain had to go or I had to go. So the doctor said, let's try new knees instead. See the ups, the downs, the insides and outs of being a creative. As an HVAC professional, he had to be creative. How was he going to work one-on-one with families that needed his skills? You see what I mean? Everybody is a creative. What are you supposed to do when the dreams change? When you age out, like I used just a few seconds ago, do you really age out? Or is it that you have to make a decision of how can I take the knowledge and the experiences that I have once lived and how can I incorporate it into this new mind, body, and soul that I'm living? It's not that you're, you, you were designed to, okay, experience it, then forget it, because you're not going to forget it. The lessons that I learned as a martial artist through my third degree black belt I I incorporate those lessons in life. And I had a sabonim that was just so brilliant when it came to preparing your mind for the future. I'll never forget my combat karate instructor, Julio Hildegra. And, and he always saw me struggling to do a high kick, a high, you know, roundhouse kick or even a train hook kick. And he would, he would look at me and say, CT, CT, why, why, why you do that? And I said, because I want to look pretty. I want, I, want, I want to be like Bruce Lee. I want to be like the people in the movies. And he looked at me very stern in the eyes. And he goes, one day your highest kick is only going to be to someone's knee. It is my job to train you at your present age to kick at that knee, to master that kick, to learn how to take care of the attacker's body from the level of the age that you're going to be. Oh, I was pissed. I was horribly pissed because that's not why I thought I was in martial arts. I thought I was there, you know, because because of the martial arts about it, because that's what I was seeing in movies and on TV shows. So I quit him and, and, and I went to, to Taekwondo where we could do those big, beautiful kicks and blocks and go into tournaments and win them. 
the ins, the outs, the ups and downs of being a creative. And then one day, just like Julio said, I got old and the pains became too much. I couldn't attend class anymore because the pain was too much. I had to make a choice. And the choice was, what am I going to do with the knowledge that I've learned? And that's helped me out so much with the podcasting and being in CS where it's about community. My grandmaster in Taekwondo, he was all about the community. He would always ask me, what are you doing in the community? How are you leading people? Well, do you want to see my kick? What are you doing in the community? That's the way he lived in Korea, is that it was always about building a school for the community, to be there for the community, to strengthen the community, because he believed as a creative that your community will change when you change the minds of those that have made a decision to break the law, to do stupid things in the middle of the night. He would go out there and he would train them, train them in ways that work the heart. And all of a sudden they became business leaders in his city. The challenge on this particular episode of Defrag, in your own personal Defrag journal, you don't have to call it that, but in your place of recording your voice or just documenting things on a little notepad, I want you to ask the question, in your own personal life, what are the ins and outs and the ups and downs of your creative life and style? What have you turned off because things got in the way? Ask the questions, then question the answers. It's time to start digging deeper into your mind, body, and soul. When you can't find answers, what's your go-to? Do you go to food? Do you go to drugs? Do you go to alcohol? Do you go to a place where all you want to do is complain because you're still using endorphins to complain? And then my father would say, well, what are you going to do about it? I hear your voice, but where, where's the solution? What, what happens next? Defrag it. Be honest with yourself. If you don't like the answers, then question it. If you want to change the answers, then question it. Give yourself permission to see who you are beyond that mirrored image. Because I do believe there is a life on the other side of that mirror. And the only way that we're going to get even a glimpse of that life is by asking the questions and questioning the answers. I happen to call it defragging.